Welcome to part one of the webinar series entitled A Multidimensional Approach to Building Your Personal Brand. Alongside me is my uh, very special guest, Aston Godwin. He is a PhD student at the University of Southern California. And uh, in, this, in this part, in, this, in part one of this series, we're going to discuss planning for your future and goal setting and creating that career map so that you uh, can have a narrow focus on what you want to do in your career. But first and foremost, Aston, tell the, tell the audience a little bit about yourself and uh, before we get started. So a little bit about myself. Um, you mentioned that I'm a doctoral student at the University of Southern California. Um, I'm studying organizational change and leadership. Um, basically what that means is I want to be able to help organizations be sustainable um, and last uh, for a long time and helping them with different problems or solutions that they might need. Um, so a little bit about where I've come from. Um, I went to Auburn University, have a bachelor's degree in political science. Um, shortly after that, I joined the Peace Corps and served in Zambia, learned a lot of cool stuff, taught people how to build fish ponds and a whole bunch of other stuff, came back, started working for the Red Cross in a small Red Cross office, so got to wear a lot of different hats. Um, while I was at the Red Cross, I got a master's degree in public administration and really enjoyed working with volunteers and connecting them to roles in the community. From there, I started working at United Way, started working with kids a lot more and really enjoyed that and eventually went into the camping world and working with kids with cancer and their families to have recreational and therapeutic experiences uh, before, during, and after their cancer journey. While I was at uh, Camp Sunshine, which is an organization in Georgia that serves kids with cancer, I got my master's in youth development leadership. And now I am a consultant for nonprofit organizations and just recently started my own company called Making Good Trouble. All right. So uh, Making Good Trouble, what, what are some things that you uh, are consulting with a, uh, different organizations about currently? Well, I think one thing is just being aware of like current needs that organizations have. Um, right now, we're in the middle of a pandemic. So uh, a lot of youth development organizations want ways to connect with youth during this time. And the ways we can do that are through our computer, through a mailbox and over the phone. So working with those organizations on ways to develop activities, but also develop ways to measure the difference they're making in the lives of youth and the lives of those families they're serving. All right. Well, that's, uh, you know, that's certainly important in this day and age and, and being able to have that online presence will even serve us after the pandemic's over because it just builds that other layer of, uh, of communication and connection. So uh, that's a really good, really cool thing. And, uh, you know, I, I hope that, that it uh, builds even further in the future. So, so Aston, let's, let's get started. Uh, when we're thinking about careers and, and, and when you're, when you're kind of dreaming, Hey, I want to do this, or I want to do that. You know, for example, I want to be on ESPN, for example, or I want to be the CEO of IBM, you know, what, whatever, whatever a dream that someone may have, uh, in order to make it a reality, there is a, there's a multidimensional process. And I want to talk about that process in this webinar series because uh, it's something that I've been through uh, with multiple different experiences. So I, I've, I've, had this pro I've had this process uh, over different career types. So I, I kind of understand how it changes from career to career, from job type to job type, uh, whether it be as a video editor, whether it be as a uh, educator and a coach. Um, I've, I've applied this same process. So we want to kind of strip it down to its base level um, so that we can make it more customizable. So let's talk about planning. So when, when you're planning for the future, you know, what are some things right off the bat? So you brainstorm some different ideas. So what are some things right off the bat that you can do? Um, I think that the first thing uh, that I try to do is thinking about my purpose not necessarily like the what I'm looking to do, but like why I want to do it. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, what I mean by that is, um, it's not necessarily I thought I was going to be a camp director one day or I was going to be in the Peace Corps, but I knew I enjoyed working with people. Um, I enjoyed helping people. I enjoyed working as a team. So just trying to figure out the things that I enjoyed, but also the things that I was good at, because there's a lot of things that I'm passionate about. Like I'm passionate about football and Mm -hmm. baseball um, and listening to rap or different types of music. (laughs) But like, honestly, I'm not very good at those things. Um, But I enjoy them and just figuring out the things that you're good at, the things that you're passionate about and the things that you have a purpose for, I think help to figure out that next step of what are you going to do next and how are you going to do it? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the biggest key is find out why, why, you know, why am I passionate about these things? What can I do? What are some things out there? You know, as I look up jobs, what are some things out there that match my interests? Like how can I take my love of rap music, football, uh, baseball, and, uh, and movies, and how can I make that into a career? Well, you know, there's coaching, there's production, all kind of stuff, you know, and that's kind of where I, when, you know, when I was, when I was in high school, um, you know, I wish there was a, a series like this that, that could have kind of helped me mold that. I kind of just had to figure it out as I went uh, when, I, when I got to Georgia. But, um, you know, there's different avenues you can take your talents and, and kind of mold them into your purpose. Now, uh, you know, my passion is to, you know, I enjoy the same, a lot of the same things that, that you mentioned. Um, I enjoy music, movies, sports, um, all that stuff. Um, I enjoy consuming a lot of that stuff. And, and I also, you know, I, I feel that my calling is impacting youth and impacting kids that may not have those same kind of influences in their lives, uh, which kind of led me to where I am today. And, uh, you know, I was fortunate that I was able to blend my kind of two career paths that I've been on so far um, into one. So, you know, it's just figuring out the why. And, and that's the first step. You know, you, you figure out why, you know, what's my purpose? Why do I feel, you know, why do I feel that that's my, my, my passion and my calling? And then once you start to investigate, then you start going, okay, so what, what matches, what matches that? What career types match uh, the things that I'm passionate about? The things that I enjoy doing, how can I blend all of that together? Then you mentioned the skills, right? So how can I, you know, what am I good at? Well, for me, um, you know, I may not be quick witted, but you know, I can be pretty creative and, and, and I am a good uh, creator of, of certain things. So you, know, you, you kind of find those type of things. And I, and I feel like I'm pretty good at communicating. Not, not always, but um, I, I do feel like I, I'm, I'm, that's one of my stronger suits at least. Um, and we'll talk about strengths and development areas here in a little bit, but you, know, you just got to find out what you're good at and you got to sit down and say, what am I good at? And then you take a look at that list. And then from that list, you then go back and cross reference it with, with what you enjoy doing. So that's all part of even stepping foot into the job market. You got to understand yourself. It's, it's, it's a bottom up approach. If you don't understand yourself, you're going to get lost in this cycle of, finding different jobs and bouncing job to job and never really being happy. And the next thing you know, you blink and you're 55 years old and you haven't, you know, you haven't been happy yet and you're miserable going to work and you're dreading going to work and you're wearing a suit and you're, you know, just making phone calls and doing random stuff that you would never enjoy in a million years doing. So, so understanding yourself, Aston, um, let's talk about, you know, what you're good at. Okay. Now, let's talk about understanding and being honest with yourself and understanding where you need more work and how not necessarily. And and I want to ask you this uh, as far as like overcoming all of that stuff or just managing it into the, to the point where it doesn't hurt you in a lot of careers, you know, you're you're good at it, but you're never really going to be great in those areas, but you can manage them and, and have some strategies that will help you along the way. Yeah. I think that uh, to your point, like connecting this to the why to like your why might stay the same, but the things you're good at or the, what you're doing, leave room for it to like evolve where, Mm -hmm. because 
like for me, I'm not like the same version of myself I was when I was 18 years old because I've had more experiences. I've had more relationships. I've tried more things. So the things that like I'm good at or the things that I might need improvement on like have changed over time. Um, and the thing, the what I was trying to do has changed over time, but I've always been able to like connect it back to a version of the why I started out with. Um, the things that you're good at, like, like you said, um, I think just being aware of and asking others. So if you have three good friends, this is a pretty good, easy exercise that you can do. Um, find three good friends and individually sit them down over the phone, um, in person, just ask them for three things you feel like they feel like you're good at, mm -hmm. you know, and because it's important to know what you think you're good at, but it's also important to know what other people feel you're good at. And that's going to be helpful in a lot of ways. One, because eventually you're going to have a boss someday and they're going to tell you what you're good at and what you need to have work on. So the exercise puts you in a position where you can get feedback from others that you're comfortable with and you're starting to build that skill about getting feedback. Um, mm -hmm. The other thing you can do is before you meet with these people, write down your list of things you, you're good at. And if it doesn't line up with the things your best friends are telling you you're good at, um, maybe you can ask them what it was that made them say that, you know, and so you can start collecting um, what, what you need to develop. Um, the other thing is if you can't find three good friends that will tell you things you're good at, you might want to look for some new friends because uh, yeah. <laughs> you want to surround yourself with people that are going to lift you up and yeah. not bring you down. And also be honest with you in the same token. Like, yeah. like I can tell you, Aston, you know, some things that I feel like you need to work on or maybe you need to get better at. And, you know, you're not going to get all offended because, you know, it's coming from a good place. You know, it's coming from, hey, I just want you to be a better version of yourself. And, and I know you would do the same for me. So, um, yeah, it's just, it's just understanding yourself and really just training yourself to be a, being able to reach out for, for help too, um, you know, and, and be able to take criticism and take feedback constructively and, and understand that and, and try to understand the differences in constructive and deconstructive or de destructive, excuse me, uh, criticism or feedback. So, you know, there's a whole lot of skills built into that exercise that you can get better at uh, just by calling on three friends, three people that you trust. And that's really easy to do because, hey, you probably call them anyway. So why not one, when you have them one day and say, hey, you know, what, what am I good at? Or, you know, how do you, how do you feel that this is going to go? Or, you know, what skills do you think I have? And, you know, just get some, just get some basic advice. And, and hopefully that, that person's honest with you. And if they're not, then they're not really truly a friend. They might just be more of an acquaintance. So that's another good way to weed that process out. So um, as, as you develop this list of strengths and development areas and, and you kind of got an idea now, okay, I'm, I'm good at ABC. So I'm going to go now hunt for jobs that, that match up with those. You know, I, I'm good at the Adobe Creative Suite. Most, you know, most, most notably Premiere Pro and After Effects. You know, I'm going to look, you know, I'm going to look for careers that involve that type of thing. You know, that's probably where professionally, that's probably where my, my biggest, uh, my biggest strength is, is, is being able to operate within those two programs. Um, more so Premiere Pro than, than After Effects. But you know, that's, you know, for example purposes, let's just say that those two I, I fit in the bubble. So I'm going to go, you know, there's a lot of different job uh, search engines, Indeed.com, Career Builder, Monster, you know, a lot of those, a lot of those type places. Uh, I think Indeed's been a really good resource. I think they do a good job um, with a lot of their career tools and access things. And it's real easy to search within. So um, you just type in those keywords and, and, and find, you know, you, then you start looking for jobs. So when you, the, the key is when you look for jobs, okay, the key is now to, once you find a, a job headline that you like, it's all about breaking down. Okay. Now I've got to take this job. 
and see kind of where my skills fit. So, so as to how, how would, what's the best way to do that? Um, I think that one of the ways you can do that first, I think just take a half step back is just make sure you're realizing that when you're looking for these things, these are the skills and the skill level you have right now, not the skill level you'll have forever. So um, just make sure when you're looking at jobs um, that this is the version of yourself you have right now and uh, make sure you're planning for like you to get better at those things. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's what a lot of employers want to see is that you're willing to get better at those skills and advance. Um, I think to your point, just looking for skills and things that you're good at over like job titles is a good approach to have because sometimes job titles don't really tell the whole picture. Mm -hmm. And at one place, like a specialist might mean one thing or a coordinator might mean something or um, lead actor might mean another thing. Mm -hmm. But if you look at like the description of the job and search for things based on the description and the job responsibilities, you're more likely to connect to some things that you're able to do, things that you might want to do. Um, And if you know of places that have um, positions that you're interested in, reach out to their human resource department. They're they're normally happy to help um, with answering any questions you might have, or reach out to someone that already works there and say, hey, like one of the goals of mine is I'm really good at um, Adobe Creative Cloud or Creative Suite, like, and I noticed that you've had these skills too. How did you get to your position? Where did you start at? Um, I think um, reaching out to people for help and also using the resources you have. So your teachers at your school are a good place to start. Mm -hmm. Um, Your friends and your family um, just asking the people around you for help, um, I think can get you a lot of places. Yeah. And it's all about just, like you said, you hit the nail on the head. You know, it's all about finding how those job responsibilities and requirements fit with what you're good at and how they fit the title of, of the job. You know, I, I got burned on this personal. I'll tell you a personal story and, and ask them you, uh, you are well aware of this story, but um, there was a job that I that I applied for and got right out of college. Uh, it was for a uh, marketing, I think it was marketing director, and they had like all these like different sports logos on there to kind of draw people in. You know, I get there, I'm like all excited, you know, got my suit on, and then next thing you know, we're in the middle of Griffin, Georgia, and I'm walking around in parking lots, hounding people about barbecue sets. And, you know, I knew about halfway through, I'm sweating my, you know, what off. And um, I just realized, hey, this was very misleading. This was not what I expected, you know, and and I don't know that either I didn't really read the fine print, I didn't know to read the fine print, or it wasn't explicitly, you know, laid out. But, um, no, I, I, needless to say, I lasted one day before before I, uh, you remember that, you know, I lasted one day to the advice of just about everyone I talked to. And my mom said she would have snatched me right up if she, if she saw me and Griffin doing all that stuff. So, um, yeah, so, so you got to learn when you look at job descriptions and they're a little bit better nowadays, uh, than they used to be. They're a little bit more descriptive because I think they have to be, uh, because the online resources are really good. Uh, so it's just, you got to read the, you got to read it. And you got to understand what the requirements mean and what the job description means. So like when it says, you know, you're going to lead a team of analysts, you know, what does that mean? Are, are you, you know, are you going to just sit there and oversee and give them work? Or are you going to, you know, get in the, you know, it's just, just what dimension does it mean? And, and usually the, the language will tell you that. So it's, it's all about understanding the wording of, of the description. So, um, but yeah, you just got to be aware and you got to ask people. You know, feel free to reach out to people within the company too. That's a re- that's really good advice. You know, and because that it, they may help you, they may not. You know, you never know. But you don't know until you try. You know, what's the worst they could do? Not answer you, and, and you're you're no worse than you were. So, um, you know, just reach out, do what you can, 
uh, to understand the job posting. So now you've zeroed in on the post that you want. So now we've got to create that map on how to get there. So let's say I just graduated high school. I'm, in, I'm enrolling at the University of Georgia. I see, you know, I've kind of researched some, some different career fields that I want. I've, got, I've, kind of set, I've kind of set a long-term goal. You know, I want to be the, the I want to be the, I want to be a lead producer at Paramount Studios um, or at Pinewood Studios down in Atlanta. So either one, the major, major studio. Okay. So I'm going to look at the, I'm going to create a roadmap from here. And, and, and this is good practice um, to keep yourself on track, to keep your, to be able to hold yourself accountable and, uh, and to be able to just say, Hey, you know, okay, I mark this off. And it gives you confidence, I think. So, you know, what would you say about creating a written roadmap of my long-term goal and then working, then jumping all the way back down to the beginning and then building from the start up and mapping everything else out? And let's talk about goals too. And what kind of goals would you set along the way? What's it, what makes a good goal? Let's talk about all of that. First, I think the suggestion I would make is um, first to write your your roadmap or your goals in pencil because um, mm -hmm. it gives you the opportunity to kind of update those things mm -hmm. because you're going to learn things along the way and that roadmap map might change a little, but I think there's a lot of power in writing those things down. Um, but don't be discouraged if like a bump in the road comes or you fail at something. I think writing it in pencil allows you to have it down but it allows you to um, change the path or adapt the path if you need to. Mm -hmm. um, and like you said, it gives you a checklist though, um, because a lot of things come, good things come from structure and preparing for things. Mm -hmm. um, I think being really specific about your goals help too. And the thing I'll say is your job really starts before you walk into a place after you're hired. Like there is just as much work that happens prepping for getting a job, if not more than getting an actual job because you are coming up with a strategy. We've already talked about like analyzing your skills and um, looking for jobs that like objectives and responsibilities that kind of align with you. Um, but I would say that um, just take it step by step. It's not a, all about figuring out the entire staircase when you're um, coming up with these steps. These are going to be like bullet point things where it just keeps you in check along the process. Um, so the first thing I would do is after you've um, come up with your why is come up with some realistic goals for yourself about finding a job and finding those, res those responsibilities that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. So dedicate some time every day to sit down and look for jobs. Um, I think committing to having a amount of time, whether it's 30 minutes or three hours, it helps a lot that you've committed that time, that job that you have to find a job um, is huge. And you might not find anything that day, or you might find five things or 10 things that interest you. Um, the, the next thing I would do is kind of refine those job descriptions or review your job descriptions that you found and the jobs you're interested in and kind of go through it line by line where it's asking each question like, did I understand what my responsibility would be based on what they told me? And if they, you don't know, then write a question for it and keep going through that. And then once you've come up with a top like four or five jobs, just ask people around you what they think about it um, and what questions they might have about it. Because um, getting as much feedback as possible helps you prep for the next step in the interview. Um, and throughout the whole thing, I would say try to connect everything with that why that we talked about earlier, um, because it's really going to be like your key to finding something that 
you want to stick with long term. Yeah, because no, I mean, eventually, with when you're doing your job search, and and eventually when you get beyond the planning phases of it, if you haven't found your job that or your career that that connects with your why, you're going to end up being a nomad, and and I think that ends up doing more harm than good as far as your prospects go. So you got to be very careful in the planning process so that you can actually, and, and you said this perfectly, that you can actually find that job, that, that good fit. And if you don't know if it's a good fit, ask, investigate further. But you have to make note of that because, you know, you get a couple of days down the road and, and you kind of forget and you see that job posting and then, and then you don't know. And then you may be passing up on, on your, your dream scenario, or you might on the flip side, you might get into it and realize it's a nightmare or, you know, just might just go by the wayside and, you know, and, and it may just, may not have been a good fit for you anyway. And, and it may just been natural good luck. So you never know until you investigate. So that, that's, that's the key is, is to investigate each thing, uh, make, make notes along the way, have questions, things like that, you know, and, and have things in mind, like what does my ideal career look like? You know, what does my ideal boss look like? So start, you know, all those skills and qualities that you mapped out about yourself now that you've kind of found out about yourself, let's map them out about your workplace, your boss, your coworkers. You know, what does it look, sound, feel like your ideal career in your ideal office space or your ideal working environment? What is your boss? You know, do, do, you, do you mind if your boss is a micromanager? Do you want your boss to be a certain way? Do you want your coworkers to be a certain way? Do you want to work in a certain place? You know, does your, does your office area, your work area have to be quiet, loud? Do you mind working outside? You know, do you mind sweating a little bit? If you have to wear a suit, is that a problem? Um, you know, if, if there's things about each job specifically, hey, you know, and, and you may not, you may not know that you have those preferences until you actually like, oh, well, I can't imagine wearing a suit or, oh, I can't imagine. Okay. This, this one is saying, hey, I might need to be flexible on weekends and holidays and, and I might be asked to, you know, is that a problem for you? You know, you've got to really dive into those things. And so that's part of, that's the next level of career mapping. Once you've figured out yourself, now figure out what your ideal scenarios are in the workplace and figure out, prioritize what you can live with, what you can't live with, what are non-negotiables. Hey, if this is, if this is the case in this job, I absolutely cannot take it. Or um, this is the key selling point where if I get this one or two things, I'm in, no questions asked. And, and I could be there Monday, if you, if you want me to. So um, those are some things you got to realize. Uh, you got to understand the job market. Also, um, as you're researching, you got to kind of understand where the trends are going. Um, a lot of things are going more online. So in the production world, you know, you've got to be flexible to the way the job market's trending. So um, things like that also um, are big. And, and then when you, then after all of that's done, you can set goals and, and goal setting happens in the planning process. Your goals are readjusted as you start your career and they're readjusting as you advance your career. And even if you get to the very, very top, you still have goals that you can place above yourself. So it's always good to write goals and ask and you, you probably, you'll probably agree with me when I say this, um, but your goals should always be uh, simple, small, attainable um, things you can measure and define success for yourself with. And, uh, and things that, you know, especially early on, smaller things that you can consider wins. Because a win's a win in the career world. You know, you get a win, you get confidence. Um, and you get another you get another feather in your cap. And then as you go, uh, as you advance, your goals can be more, you, you can have some more long-term goals. You can have some more complex goals, some more difficult goals. Um, but you always want to be ambitious, but not unrealistic. So, like, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be the, the studio head at Universal in 24 months. That's just not realistic. That's a good long-term goal for myself, but I've got to understand that that's not going to happen anytime soon. And that may never happen ever. Um, but if I want to do that, if I want to create that as a goal, I now then have to map out what, what's going to take uh, to get there and realize if I've got a realistic shot time-wise to, to get there at where I'm at at 37 years old. So, um, or about to be 37 years old. So, um, so those are all good points. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on goal setting? 
um, before we before we wrap this uh, part one? I think there's a couple things. One, um, when you're looking at the like your future, um, you need to ask yourself: Does this require like additional education? And if it does, what do I need? So it could be: Do I need to go to um, a technical school? Like, do I need to go through a certification process? Um, do I need to um, do a little bit more research about what I need to make this next um, career step happen? Um, the other thing is um, be realistic with your goals too, because um, right now you're looking for a good fit and not a perfect fit, because very rarely is there a perfect fit for anyone. So we're looking for a good fit. Mm -hmm. um, one exercise that I suggest is, this is super simple, is um, on a sheet of paper or on your computer or whatever, like divide up the paper into three sections and you'll have like a green light, a yellow light, and a red light. Mm -hmm. So the green light are things that you, you're okay with. Like no matter what, like, these are things that I have no problem doing. Um, whatever they ask me to do, that's fine. The yellow light, I'm, I'm flexible with, I would prefer not to, but it's not a deal breaker. And the red is like deal breakers for you. Like, mm -hmm. and on your list right now, there should be fewer deal breakers than things you you're willing to do because starting off your career, you need to be more comfortable trying new things than refining the things you don't want to do. Because first of all, it's going to show that you're willing to gain experience and do things that you might not be comfortable with. The other thing is you might learn something that you didn't know you were comfortable with. So just being open-minded about um, those, those things you're willing to do and not do. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is, you talked about setting like simple, um, really strategic goals. So give yourself a timeline goal too. Like, mm -hmm. hey, by this That's point, perfect. I want to have had, you know, three interviews. Like, you don't even have to say, I want to get a job. You just want to get yourself in a position to have a job. So start off with the goal of getting interviews. Um, and start off with a goal of connecting with people in the field that you want to go into. Um, it's really helpful. And I do this too. When I send an email, I send it through my student account um, and just say, hey, I'm a student at USC. Um, I'm wondering if you have time to connect. I'd like to talk to you about your job and your responsibilities and a little bit about yourself. Mm -hmm. And yeah, when I'm networking, yeah. I like I let them know, like, this is a networking conversation. Like, I'm not shy about it. Um, and when we do have the call or the meeting, um, I ask them two questions. One is, um, who are two more people that you would recommend me connect with? And the other question is, what can I do to help you? Because the who question, people want to connect you with other people, especially if you've connected with them. Mm -hmm. They want you to know that they have a network and they want to help you. The second question, what can I do for you? It kind of catches the person off guard because not a lot of people put themselves in a position to help others. But it also shows them you have some confidence too, where, hey, I know that I have something to offer you. So just let me know if I can help you. Um, and that's like, regardless of your age or experience, mm -hmm. you all have something to offer someone. Um, and I think finally it's, um, being forgiving of yourself too, and expect some failures along the way, because inevitably you're going to bomb an interview. So just be prepared for that. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get a job. We've all not gotten jobs that we thought we were going to get. Oh, yeah. Um, Absolutely. And the other thing is, um, like, be ready for people not to respond to you. And remember what that feels like, because eventually you're going to be in that position. 
where you're going to have the opportunity to respond to people that need help. And you can be the person that didn't respond to you, or you can be the person that makes that change and offers up your help to somebody else. Because ultimately, all we all need is a little opportunity mm -hmm. to take the step forward. And then from there, you can sprint, you can run a marathon, like you're working towards your goal. So this is like that first major step of getting yeah. those career goals. Yeah, just understand that failure is part of the process. And failure is not failure until you quit. So just because you fail doesn't mean that you're a failure. You know, fail, failure is quitting. Failing is, is growing uh, in, in, in my eyes. And, and I've, I've failed a, a ton of interviews. Uh, I've done a lot. I've made a lot of mistakes. Um, so I'm not sitting here uh, talking to you from a place of uh, I did everything perfectly. Um, you know, I might have found a perfect storm on a couple of occasions where things worked out in my favor. Um, things that were out of my control ended up working out in my favor. And I did some things to help myself in, in some scenarios. And, and also the experiences that I've had on, on the bad interviews and on, on the ones that, hey, I made a mistake here or I rambled there or, you know, things like that uh, that we'll talk about in a different module um, that, uh, that will help you along the way as well. And if you can kind of curb some of those things, you know, you might be able to help yourself more often. And, and avoid those catastrophic situations. But Aston, some of the information you alluded to, we will cover in uh, the networking specific module. Uh, and we'll talk That's about all kinds of- That's what call a segue, Corey. That is a segue. It's a good teaser too, because it's gonna be a separate video. Um, so you can, you can check out that module on down the, on down the list. Um, and, uh, and, and so that's, uh, that's perfect. So we're going to talk about uh, some of the topics we're going to discuss in other modules. We're going to talk about resume building, uh, cover, cover letter writing, uh, crafting that, per, you know, I want to say perfect, perfect, such the wrong word, but crafting that professional looking uh, standout worthy resume and cover letter. So we're going to talk about that. Um, with Aston, we're going to talk about winning the interview, the art of making the first impression, um, we're going to talk about demo reels. You're going to hear uh, some industry professionals uh, really speak more on that um, with the guest speakers. Uh, Dave Schindler, Kayla Anderson of WKRN will be joining us. And uh, Jarrett Stillman of uh, 102.5 The Game here in Nashville will also be joining us on the guest speaker series. Um, so a lot of exciting things coming up. Uh, we're going to also look at um, the seven habits of, of highly successful people. So those are some of the modules that you can, that you can look forward to some of the content that you can look forward to in this webinar. Uh, but there's a lot of great information. Aston, I thank you for joining me. Um, and be sure to tune into the other modules as well. Uh, be sure to catch Aston. Aston, where, where can we find you on social media? Oh, Aston, God, at Aston Godwin, all of the platforms, all the platforms, uh, Twitter, it, Instagram, school, school friendly, school like friendly, business, business friendly. Business friendly. Gotcha. Okay. So, so no parting picks. That's good. Um, so, uh, you can find me, uh, on social media at coach Burton 36 on Twitter. Um, you can find me Corey Burton on Facebook. Uh, you can find my Instagram pages, my, my school channel, topper nation news, um, is, uh, is on Instagram. You can find, uh, you can find Burton.Corey on Instagram. Uh, you can find me also, um, on Twitter, you can find our Topper Nation News Twitter at Topper underscore News. So um, all the all the different social media platforms. Again, you can always reach out to Aston. He'll be he'll be more than happy to help you with any sort of thing. So Aston, I appreciate you joining me. Um, we will welcome him uh, back for uh, interviewing and uh, networking. So uh, be sure to tune into those, especially, and be sure to tune into the other ones as well. All right, thank you guys, and have a great rest of your day. War Eagle.